We are the Lee Valley Growers Association. Since the days of the Doomsday Book, the Lee Valley has been supplying fresh produce and flowers for Britain. Agriculture and horticulture has been part of our history for hundreds of years. We now want to tell you our story. We want to show you what we do and how we have developed our industry for the 21st century. We have a rich history. In 1911, a group of growers convened the first meeting of what was to become the Lee Valley Growers Association. We have been developing technology and advancing agricultural science to become one of Britain's leading industries. For over a century, we have showcased our skills to the world and to royalty. houses have changed from traditional structures to efficient environmentally sustainable units operating the latest robotic technologies but at its heart this is a people business our industry has always relied on the expertise and skill of people from across Europe that is still the case today our business relies on a rich diversity and that is reflected in our growers and their European workers. Families of growers passing on their expertise and knowledge to a new generation of Lee Valley growers. In a changing world, our growers and members are constantly working together to advance the growing industry for the British consumer. We grow fresh produce for Britain. I started in 1974. I started as a harvester. I go back a long time, it's fair to say 55 years. 27 years now, um, a lifetime. We grow hardy nursery stock and we grow it primarily for the landscape industry in all its forms. Cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes and aubergines. All colours of peppers, aubergines, um, Romero peppers as well, cucumbers. California wonder peppers about 20 acres and then we grow um, some small mini peppers, not chilies, and we grow some uh, very sophisticated cherry on the vine. Our crops are mainly cucumbers and tomatoes. The Lee Valley historically was um, the largest area for growing flowers such as roses um, and carnations. There's not enough information given out to consumers. Even, even people we talk to people that are not involved in industry, when we, we tell them what we do and what we grow, they, oh, we didn't realise it comes from the Lee Valley, we didn't realise it comes from the UK. Some people say, we thought, we thought a lot of products were Spanish. People have no idea where tomato coming from. Starting from school, we, we had open days for, for schools, and uh, when we got 30, 40 children on site, and when all they leave and they say, no, we are, we had a great time, now we know how they've been growing because some of them some of them been thinking they were growing in the ground, some of them been thinking they were growing on the trees. So at least now from young age we need to educate people so people don't know. And, and following with adults, when they come they said we didn't expect to have this size industry, just here locally, especially in Liwali, 
behind the door. We, go, we didn't expect to have so many hectares of glass growing tomato and being so professionally. You can see as many programs as, as you want on TV, but unless you actually visit a site and see what actually is involved, the level of sophistication. Gone are the days where people think you've put a plant in the ground, you wait six weeks, and then all of a sudden you've got lots of cucumbers or lots of tomatoes. No, it is very, very sophisticated. It's a science now. We try to work with uh, local schools to try to educate children how food is produced. And it's a, it's a long process to be able to teach kids of today where food actually comes from. In the early days when I started, it was very much hard labour. It was, it was an industry where you had to um, sterilise the soil, it was wheelbarrows to take stuff in and out. It was, it was picking and hand taking the stuff from the nurseries. It, it, was, it was real hard work for tough people. But the industry's improved. The glass, the, gla the glass has changed, got new structures. It's computerized. It's grown, it's grown in rock wool and hydroponics. So the industry has become easier to control the cropping and the quality of the cropping, so you get less, uh, you know, inferior product. Growers are always looking for the next best thing. So the supermarkets want um, something sweeter. They want something more uniform um, in size, in shape, uh, visually. So growers um, are, do their own research and development into new varieties, uh, trialing new seeds. Um, all the innovation is left with the grower uh, to, to explore and come up with. To do our business, we need you know, substantial amount of um, labour in the glass house and in the pack house. Whatever organisation you use, in, whether you're dealing with growers in the north of the country or the, uh, in the south of the country or in the Lee Valley, we have a problem. Our labour has been all Eastern European for many, many years. Without the European workers, this in industry would certainly suffer and probably lots of other industries. They're, they're paid the right money, they're looked after, their welfare is, is good. Uh, we, we also have English staff, but we employ a lot of Europeans. And as I say, with, without this workforce, this industry would suffer. Eastern European come into this job, I think for the reason, main reason, because local, I would say British, English people, they don't want to be in that industry, probably because it's too hard to hot also. A simple example, we have people working. Uh, I had an advertised harvesting job all over uh, Nazin, all over Harlow, and we had a couple English native people coming to work. After two hours, they're coming out of the greenhouse saying, thank you very much, it's too hot for me, bye-bye. I said, well, okay, uh, what, what about you coming back next, next time? Or you, what do you want to do? No, no, he said, I'm not interested. And there's been a couple occasions like that, but so that's why industry relying too much on Eastern European workers, because that's only people we can find for that industry. The sad thing is, is that we actually only have two English people working in the business, which have nothing to do with the administration of the company, which is a sad state. As an employer, we employ in excess of 200 people. Um, and we find it very, very difficult to get local people to come and work in our business. It, it, within this industry, there's always been migrant workers working in glasshouse sector. I mean, if you even look before the Italians come over, there was a lot of Danish that run the glasshouse sector. It wasn't just the, 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 the UK people, it was Danish, so, and, and their workforce was migrant workers and it, I think it's just a trend, always. We've been asking Europeans to come and work in the glass houses since the 1950s so it's not a new thing. 
the developments of robotics and artificial intelligence for picking and harvesting fruit are decades away. So this is one of the, the real issues that we're facing at the moment. If after Brexit the Eastern Europeans don't come and work for us anymore, we have got a huge problem on our hands. It's very, very difficult. If we lose Eastern Europeans, we would have to scale down the business. And if it got very, very bad, then we would actually have to consider that there is no more future. It would make it more difficult um, to employ the right people. It, 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 it would make any, any company within this in, industry suffer slightly. Um, we'd have to have, again, government support to help us get over this, this, this problem because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be good for the industry. The current um, political situation at the moment for our business is that it doesn't give us any stability. We, don't, we have no direction as to where this country is going with Brexit. Um, I don't think generally in the business world there is any confidence in any business at the moment, um, which the end result is that people aren't spending money and are not investing. First of all, the people who are making decisions, especially we're talking now a lot about Brexit, about closing borders. First of all, these people need to come from Westminster or wherever they sit in or, and come, especially to Livali. I'll, I'm happy to show them around, show them, spend half day, probably even full day with us, seeing how much work involved, to probably grab scissors or jump on a trolley and try to do some harvesting job or crop work by themselves, see how much uh, work involved, and uh, understand that who wants to do their job in the first place. Can we still rely on local labor, or we really need to think about bringing people from abroad? And I'm not saying people from abroad, they are more harder workers, or they are better, or they are more intelligent, or they are in, nothing like that, but somehow, British people, English people, they don't want to do this job inside the greenhouses. And uh, they need to understand that if we don't bring as any Eastern European workers or European workers or even Russian workers, whatever they're going to decide to do in the future, how they're going to open their borders and whatever they want to do in the future, we wouldn't be able to survive without labor because every, every crop needs to be harvested in time, otherwise tomatoes, cucumber, peppers, they're just going to get rotten. Every crop work needs to be done in time because if crop work is not done in time, the crop is going out of balance and it's not going to pr produce nice and juicy fruits. It's not going to produce nice and consistent fruits, so you're going to have different shapes of the fruits as well. And eventually, the industry is going to say, we don't have anybody to work here, let's shut down. And then what is going to happen? If we don't have local produce, we need to bring everything from, from abroad, which is probably going to be even more expensive. I think we have, over the years, expected cheap food all the time. Cheap food, cheap food. And really, we're not paying for what we're getting. If you take the winter and you can go into a, a supermarket and you can buy a Brazilian yellow melon for maybe £1.50, that yellow melon has been picked by a grower in Brazil, transported, refrigerated, put on a container, brought to the UK all the procedures that are involved with supermarkets. How much is that grower receiving of that £1.50? Probably 30 pence if he's lucky. So really, if you analyse what we get in that shopping basket of food, it is incredibly cheap. The government don't understand the business, our business, and more to the point, I don't think local people, local politicians, um, parish councillors, 
Very few of them even know that we're here in the Lee Valley. That's how bad it is. We as a company try and promote the Lee Valley business locally and virtually every single committee that we go to that we show um, our business to and that goes from nursery to pack house don't even know that we are in the area that's how ridiculous it is we have visits from uh, um, MPs from the government they come round and they're amazed to see what we're actually doing so you're not really sure if um, you know they really know what's involved to get product onto the shelf what work goes into it the government should and through M local MPs, they should be made aware and they should help to support an industry that's, that employs a lot of people. And it's, and it's good for the environment. We're helping the environment the way we grow now. Uh, there's innovation, the way we make our electricity, there's more solar power coming in. I, I think we need the government to support us and help us and, and understand why, why, why we do it, because obviously we're, we're supplying important products to, to, to households. The government needs to understand about our industry to help us in this situation. If the government wants cheap food prices, they have to make some form of contribution, whether it's to the development of glass houses or to subsidise one thing or another. Although, that said, I'm a great believer that people should pay the right value for the energy and the work that's involved in producing a cucumber, a tomato, a pepper. I think number one, we need to start with planning. Number two is um, give us direction with regards to where this country's going currently, um, with regards to Brexit or no Brexit or whatever. Um, and number three, I think labour force is you know a problem that is coming to us all very shortly because without the eastern europeans we wouldn't have a business we have a great opportunity to displace about 40 percent of britain's food imports by investing in british growers investing in the infrastructure to build glass houses and the technology to get more from less so at the moment you can grow half a million cucumbers an acre and you can't do that in the field, but with additional technology, we can increase that even more. The Lee Valley Growers is, is not something that's happened over the last few years. Since I've been in the industry, the Lee Valley Growers Association has been here, even before me. And this is a support base that we all need for insurance reasons, looking after our, protecting ourselves, and, and pulling the valley together. The Lee Valley Growers has always pulled us valley people together. Lee Valley Association has got a long history. A long history in helping small growers to understand how to grow, what to grow, which direction to develop. But also now, nowadays they've got a big uh, role in understanding and communicating to government back the needs of growers and, uh, and also helping again with labour, understanding where we can bring labour in the future, conversation about uh, industry problems, pest, disease, developing of uh, recycling, so lots of things involved and the Lee Valley Association doing a good job to bring everybody together and thinking about same things, not with one head, but with multiple heads involved and uh, making decisions together. That organisation is only as good as the person who leads it and with Lee Styles we have got a leader. Over the last 30, 40 years, we've been blessed with good guys. Tony Stevenson, previous to that. Tony was quite useful actually because early, early year um, Italians that came over um, struggled with the English language and Tony was fluent, in, 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 so that always helped. And, and Lee does a great job for, for the growers. It, he's a good sounding board and you can see he gives it good energy in terms of where they are supporting us. If we need support, we will ask for it and have done. The Lee Valley Growers are very important. And if you do a great job for the industry, um, you know, they're a voice to be, to be heard. You know, they, 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 they have dialogue with the government. So they, they, they've got that 
that foot in the door to help us with a, with a voice. So they are very important. Yeah, we do want to be recognised um, as an important sector within within the, within the UK. Really, I mean, we um, you know we're producing food, and it's and we need to be sustainable. As the world population grows, we need to be producing more and more food. So we do need to be recognised as that, not just a, a glass put up in an area and it's a, an ugly sight. I mean, a glass house is is a is a work of art now these days. You know. I think for the future of the industry, it's important that we, we, we keep the innovation going, the innovation, and we start to bring young blood in. Uh, in any industry you're in, you have to have young, young blood. I'm bringing my young family into my business because this is an industry that's healthy, it works well, and it's expanding, especially in the Lee Valley. So I think we've got to protect it.